the liar's remorse. From a letter dated January 23rd, the 21st century. She was catching on to me. I thought you were kidding about the murder. I thought maybe it was a suicide. <laughs> ah. And then she said, The way they met in that diner, George, it's like the way you and I met at Cantor's Jelly. Except I wasn't a waitress. <laughs> You're scaring me, George. You're really scaring me. <sighs> I didn't know what else to say. I don't like to lie, it's true. So I told her, don't be scared, my dear. And I had a sip of my chin. The police knew where I was the night she was killed. They knew why I wasn't there. I had told them she wanted to meet me at the house. That she had a creepy feeling. And I had tried to comfort her. Don't be scared, my dear. I told them how she kept feeling like she was being watched and followed. And then I remembered the night she was killed. Yes. Yes, I do. The time when I answered her phone call. Oh, yes, she was walking the hallway from the garage. Yes. And she said it was dark. Very dark. Oh, how oh, I remember that. Amanda, she reached for her jacket. Her arms were flimsy when she slid them into the sleeves. I remember when Betty screamed. <laughs> I still do. <laughs> I remember the screaming. I still do. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, Betty saw his black clothes. The nose. <sighs> yes. It was being pressed into her face, into her mouth. That's what I told the police. <laughs> I told her. <sighs> the look in her eyes, she can't explain. There wasn't a place she went. He didn't know where she was. It was all because of that phone. <laughs> yeah. I remember Banda when she slid her phone out and inspected it then. So that's why you hate phones, George? Oh, yeah. Yes, that's right. I'm scared now. Look at my fingers. They're shaking, George. They're shaking. I'm so scared. This, this 
Yes, I'm creeped out. Don't worry, I said. You're so pretty and beautiful. And yes, you're young. So young, my Betty was. Oh, you're just like a new Betty to me. You know, it never occurred to me that. Not until tonight. Yes, you're so beautiful, my Betty. I am, she said. Oh, yes, I said. Oh, yes. Amanda buried her eyes in her hand. You were right about all this, George. It's terrible, horrible. It's time for me to go, she said. She reached for the scarf. I could sense the fear in her. Yes, she was trying to hold herself together. The murder. Was it murder? Was it suicide? It was still going through her head. She couldn't tell if I was telling the truth. No. I didn't want her to leave. No, I wanted her to listen to me speak more. Yes, I had to have her listen to me speak more. I wanted her to kiss me again. The taste of chocolate on her tongue. I wanted, so I waited and waited for her lips to come over one final time. <sighs> yes. But I knew she was afraid. Especially when she tucked her hands into her coat and slid my black gloves out. <laughs> I could never describe the look on her face. Nor the tone of her voice when she asked, how did these gloves get here? <sighs> what gloves, I said. Your <laughs> black gloves, she had said. <laughs> Not with a laugh, of course. Oh, I don't like to lie. It's true. There's blood on them, she said. Dry blood. Aren't these yours, George? Oh, of course not, I said. <laughs> I don't wear clothes. I never have, and I never will. And you know I don't like to lie. It's true. <laughs> I never said you were lying, she said. God, I'm scared, she said, George. George, I'm going to call you when I get home. Will you please answer this phone? Please answer this time. Please promise me. Oh, yes, I said. I knew you would ask that. I walked her to the door. She must have forgotten that I had worn black gloves outside the door before we entered. Oh, this time I'll answer, my dear. Oh, yes, I will answer you. You promise me, George? Of course I do, my dear. Oh, yes. Of course 